Don in London, hello, it's June 21st. My video is all about recovery from addiction to either substance or behaviour. My addictive substance, alcohol, my behaviour equally addictive around people, places and things. Being in the right place, with the right people, with the right things and doing the right things. And trying to fit in, trying to be included. And never quite sure whether I did. Some sort of confusion from early days in my life about what we are here to do. So these days, I have a better understanding of life, sober, without a drink inside me, and also not obsessing about with the, being around the right people, in the right place, doing the right things, or having the right things. Just being myself, as best I can, for today. And that all fits in with living a good life. And part of what I want to talk, to talk about today is about spiritual which means so many different things to so many of us. Indeed, there are six, six and a half billion people on the planet, and I guess if we were asked, we would all have a slightly different definition based on our life experience, and a slightly different outlook depending on our faith. So spiritual seems to transcend belief or faith of a particular religion, but it doesn't exclude religions indeed spiritual is of the moment so I've come to understand but why am I talking about that in the context of sobriety well simply when I found I could not get sober on my own I realized I needed the help of many people to lean on many people in order to find a way into sober living so I did it on my own got to be an addict alcoholic whatever you want to call us or me and then recovery required that I had to ask for help and that's just my personal understanding the moment of clarity was on uh, one scrape too, too close to death probably realizing well it can't get any worse than this but I don't know how to get myself out of this situation and then I did ask for help from professionals and professionals steered me again in the direction of a fellowship called AA Alcoholics Anonymous so whether your substance is alcohol or drugs or whatever behaviour might be attached to addiction there is a fellowship out there common to all fellowships is anonymous which for me means the sanctuary to find out the truth of who we are so Alcoholics Anonymous provides me with sanctuary to tell the truth of who I am and it took a long time to get there so a lot of misleading statements about me and who I was because I didn't really know who I was and I didn't know who me was either yeah, it takes time it takes time to find sobriety and the Fellowship of AA is full of unique, authentic people who are able to share their experience, strength and hope where they wish to and I wish to share some of it or my experience here on a video simply because it gives opportunity for those who can't get to meetings or those who are wondering how on earth does he, does he stay sober one day at a time well it's not about me but it is about me if it weren't for everybody else I wouldn't have found a path and uh, fellowship offers me 12 principles to live well it doesn't bind me to anything it's always personal choice freedom to choose what I do today given my life situation so the same rules apply as does it to everybody in society. We follow the rules of society, community and family as best we can and if we don't like them we move on, we let go and start again in some other way but we take account of what we need to do to be able to live with others. Simple as that. So June for me is all about the sixth step in the fellowship which is about asking for my defects of character to be removed uh, but contingent on the day I ask and who do I ask? Well, I just ask the world, the universe, nature, providence. It's a gentle reminder to myself that I need to keep on getting help to keep on a sober path. And how do I do that? Well, I lean on fellowship, the many voices of wisdom sharing experience, strength and hope in fellowship, generally anonymously. So what's on my mind today? Well, the AA Daily Reflections which follows this particular part of the video, taken from other years, is all about fear and faith. <coughs> and 
both fear and faith can be in my book or for me defects when there are extremes of fear without foundation and extremes of faith without foundation so in other in other words if my defects are extremes of behavior like they used to be when I was drinking either totally self-reliant and fearful or full of faith because I knew the next right thing would come along but again without foundation I probably wasn't living reality so for me the extremes of behavior are the defects one way or another happy or sad without foundation so if my feelings don't fit what is going on now that is I feel either right or wrong about my situation and can do something about it based on real life information then I'm probably living in reality but if I'm at the extremes where old fears are upsetting me or faith in something which I cannot see or touch or understand is not helping then I need look at what am I doing today so for me um, I was looking for a definition of spirituality because uh, fellowship says the program is emotional spiritual and physical well if I know what my feelings are the emotional then I'm starting to make sense but what is spiritual and here's a definition that came from out there in the universe spirituality means something different to everyone for some it's a personal lord for others a feeling in the wind research suggests that even skeptics can stifle the sense of something greater humans can't help ask big questions even if no one manifests to answer them well I don't know whether I agree or not but the, the point there, it means something different for everyone. So spirituality, I like what an archbishop said not so long ago, not the current one in the UK. Uh, he has many ideas which are nothing to do with religion, but I'm glad he has them anyway. But a previous arch archbishop said, when asked to describe spiritual, replied, it is the ability to cope with reality. The ability to cope with reality. Now that is a description which helps me greatly it means everything is about now how we are our attitudes and behavior spiritual is the common currency of mankind truth love and wisdom in the moment of now so spiritual for me is about truth love and wisdom and all the opposites lies unlove I suppose hatred and ignorance spiritual is all those things because we can be ignorant tell lies and be hateful and have no wisdom because we're full of prejudice because of our outlook being the way it is constrained by our environment or by what we believe other people have told us so spiritual is about truth love and wisdom for me and I'm going to keep on learning that forever in the moment of now but if it's the currency of now the real exchange where it has value for humans as a currency rather than dollars, pounds, euros, yen, whatever you happen to have, rupees or whatever it happens to be in your part of the world. If we're always basing it on materialism, I don't know that it's not spiritual, but it's not helpful because we are then valuing humans as resources as we would money and whatever's on the planet. So I think there is a currency of love, truth, wisdom which shines through and if we can get to that if I know what I'm doing and can do on a daily basis based on truth then I'm on my way to spiritual in the moment of now and from other years I said this is uh, things I put out there on the internet from time to time for this day wisdom in the moment of now we have the wisdom can we stop reacting to fear anger and resentment long enough to respond to see the whole picture of us and them. Courage and confidence grow as we remind ourselves it's not just about me, my way or the highway. And so often when we're put up against a wall where fear is and the only thing we've done is reach out for a drink and we're isolated and ignorant of what we can do, we react with fear. And that doesn't help. So better to be sober and learn how to be sober. And I cannot overemphasize just how difficult it is for anyone who is addicted to a behavior or a substance to change. But it starts with one step. 
asking for help, I guess, for me and for many. And another one was fear and faith, extremes of fear, extremes of faith, question mark. As we experience our choices in the moment, unlike the old days, new possibilities open up. We learn enough fear keeps us safe from danger, and faith in the best next action helps our confidence. One step at a time for, t for today. So what do I say about recovery? Well, it's always in the moment. It's progress, never perfection. I mean, the perfection is to not know. And the upside is, if we have enough faith to say, I don't know, I need to learn, we can move on. And if we are ridiculed for it, so be it. We're with the wrong people, or the people who don't know either. Because if they were on the path of truth, love and wisdom, there is no ridicule to be found. But we will always encounter the negative, because we've been negative too. And in our addiction, we kept with ignorance. Ignorance long enough to become an addict, and then in denial for many years in my case, about the true nature of my situation. And the reason why I was able to keep in denial was I wasn't the only one in denial about it. You know, people don't want us to be addicts. It just doesn't fit with reality, or the reality we would wish for. I think that's called a fantasy. But once we recognize where we are, we have the capacity to do something about it. We let go the horror of what it was, and start to look to the beauty of what is. Even when it's difficult, harsh, and sometimes it seems unending difficulty. As M. Scott, M. Scott Peck said, life is difficult. But once we accept life is difficult, everything can become manageable as long as we ask for help, as I have found. If I don't know, I can probably find somebody who can. And if none of us know, then we're all in the same boat, aren't we? Enough of me for today. Now what follows is previous years from 2008 onwards, and also the Step 6 reading from the 12 Steps and 12 Traditions of AA. I make no apologies for sharing about the fellowship, it's there, it's part of what keeps me sober daily, and that's how I see it. But anonymity is sacrosanct in the rooms and groups of AA, the meetings of AA, or how else would we find our truth? That's how it works for me. More follows. Don in London, hello. June 21st, my video is all about recovery from addiction to either substance or behaviour. My addictive substance, alcohol, my behaviour to be addicted to work, relationships, people, places, things, anything to fix me. And yet, in the end, nothing fixed me. And I was in a fearful bundle and not wanting to wake up every morning or whatever time of day I seem to wake up. So these are daily reflections from AA, this book, Alcoholics Anonymous. I don't speak for AA, never can, never will. It's full of unique, authentic people, and we need to hear as many voices in recovery to find our path, which suits us. So here's the reading for today. Fear and Faith. The achievement of freedom from fear is a lifetime undertaking. In other words, we live one day at a time. One that can never be wholly completed when under heavy attack acute illness or in other conditions of serious insecurity, we shall all react to this emotion, well or badly, as the case may be. Only the self-deceived will claim perfect freedom from fear. Absolutely true. You know, we're not, we become fearless in facing the truth, but there will still be fear inside us about events that are going on and occurrences. Fear has caused, caused suffering when I could, have been, I could have had more faith. There are times when fear suddenly tears me apart, just when I'm experiencing feelings of joy, happiness and a lightness of heart. Faith and a feeling of self-worth toward a higher power helps me endure tragedy and ecstasy. When I choose to give all my fears over to my higher power, I will be free. And the higher power is to good conscience and to God as you understand him which for me is God is truth, love and wisdom of others. So in harness and with others included, I have a better chance of finding faith in living through whatever it is that's going on. And when it's difficult, that serenity prayer to God or good conscience, 
God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference is just for today. Don in London, hello. It's uh, 21st of June 2009, Sunday morning, just after half past eight. And my videos are all about recovery. Recovery from addiction to either substance or behaviour. My substance, alcohol, my behaviour. Trying to be perfect and never, never ever so. I don't know if I strive for perfection, but I strived very, very hard to do, to do my best. And so uh, a drinkaholic, alcoholic, workaholic, always... I suppose motivated by seen, being seen to do well and at the same time actually doing well. So whatever I turn my hand to, I generally did okay and I guess on one, one particular matter I didn't do okay but I did use it for a long time as my best friend and that was alcohol and uh, it let me down in the end or I let it down, I couldn't keep on drinking, it was killing me and so many of us get alcohol dependent and if it wasn't alcohol it might be a behavior loving people relationships you name it we can go for it going to the gym eating too much all these are disorderly if they're out of out on the extremes so somewhere there is balance in there and somebody said in a meeting recently or whenever it was that uh, when do I see balance actually it's something I see as I swing back from one extreme to the other so somewhere there is a balance and maybe we can only make it on a daily basis so recovery for me is a daily part of my life in fact it's the I suppose it's the mainstay the keystone so if I get recovery I don't know under control but making better choices in life I can make the rest of life be as it may be and be open honest and willing to what might go on so for me these, this last week it's been an eye-opener eye in many ways going on a five-day course to find out how to live with type 1 diabetes and get better understanding of my blood sugars, how they go up and down and what I can do. So it doesn't change the nature of the illness, but it certainly informs me how to know what is going on. So I know about carbohydrates, I know about uh, how to count the carbohydrates in any particular type of food. And in fact, I'm going to have to get a book on it because it is quite complicated and then match, this, match the amount of insulin I need to inject at different times of day to keep the blood sugar between 5 and 7 so I've been learning and it was good to be in the company of people who are just there for one thing diabetes and the same is true of meetings I go to for recovery I go to a Alcoholics Anonymous and if I had a drug problem I go to Narcotics Anonymous and if I had a food issue I'd be going to Overeaters Anonymous but out of all of those things, there is, a, is always a 12-step program of action. And if I went to all of these things at the same time, I could be working 36 steps. So, and that is 36 steps of action to put into practice on a daily basis. So the good news is, if we have one particular behavior or substance, which is the primary addiction or concern, we can pick that one and then utilize those 12 steps to put everything else into balance and proportion so there is no need in my in my view for me and this is only me speaking about me but other people have different opinions i, don't, I need only work 12 steps at any any particular time in my life on a daily basis and there's only one i can get right and that's the uh, not drinking for me and if i don't drink on a daily basis i could say i'm recovered yesterday and i'm recovering today because so far i haven't had a drink and my behavior is more balanced so that is good all to the good of good conscience and in my videos I share the literature of AA and what's going on for me to I suppose settle me into, the, into what I'm trying to do on a daily basis which is simply share a message of experience strength and hope here and to calm myself down into this moment where I am equal equal to anybody else that is I have one outlook of my own which is informed by the wisdom learned by other people and shared so AA meetings are critical for me and uh, I've got the preamble here on the back of this little card which also has the serenity prayer which I share at the end of these videos that's the AA preamble 
and it says this I go to meetings, I might have a meeting goer, but I didn't go to one yesterday, I was too tired and uh, here we go Alcoholics Anonymous is a fellowship of men and women who share their experience, strength and hope with each other that they may solve their common problem and help others to recover from alcoholism the only requirement for membership is a desire to stop drinking there are no dues or fees for AA membership we are self-supporting through our own contributions AA is not allied with any sect, denomination, politics, organisation or institution does not wish to engage in any controversy, neither endorses nor opposes any causes. Our primary purpose is to stay sober and help other alcoholics to achieve sobriety. And that is really why I do these videos. It's the primary purpose is to stay sober and help other alcoholics to achieve sobriety. And I share about Fellowship of AA because that helps me most. But I also got great help from the medical profession, my family, once they understood the nature of the malady I had, an allergy to alcohol, and once addicted, always addicted. And if I drink, all bets are off, because I cannot stop. So it is the first drink that does the damage for me, and one drink will never do. Rather, one drink does the damage, and a thousand never do, will never will do what it used to, which is to take the edge off, to create a place of numbness around feelings. And uh, I thought it was joy, and overcoming sadness so drinking for happiness and drinking for sadness and the gift is if we are allowed if we had allowed our system to understand what joy is and what sadness is and learned that we experience it far better without a drink inside us to the right measure you know a uh, right measure of feelings that is the real feelings in reality we would have found the spiritual connection to living which is simply the truth of now so I'm eternally grateful to AA and everybody who has been before because they are unique authentic people making a unique authentic life work on a daily basis so I don't speak for fellowship it's a sanctuary where people find their truth and I would never ever want to speak for unique authentic people who have a voice themselves if they choose to use it or utilize it but most often they do in meetings and most often they do in their daily lives being able to tell the truth to be open to be honest and to be willing to change and understand life a little bit better one day at a time that is the absolute gift so the AA fellowship is all about reality not about some fundamental organization it's not a cult it won't change you into something oh people in it might try and change you because don't forget it's full of people unique and authentic who have their own personal views about religion and everything else you know they could be very prejudiced prejudiced against everything but their own outlook could I be that? I could be and <clears throat> I need to know where I'm coming from on a daily basis which is to be equal with people and I see that as the real gift I'm running out of time as usual but daily reflections for today fear and faith June 21st the achievement of freedom from fear is a lifetime undertaking, one that can never be wholly completed when under heavy attack, acute illness or in other conditions of serious insecurity we shall all react to this emotion, well or badly, as the case may be. Only the self-deceived will claim perfect freedom from fear and indeed you know, we need a bit of fear in our lives to keep us on our mettle as it were. It goes on to say Fear has caused suffering when I could have had more faith. There are times when fear suddenly tears me apart, just when I'm experiencing feelings of joy, happiness and a lightness of heart. Faith and a feeling of self worth and a feeling of self worth toward a higher power helps me endure tragedy and ecstasy. When I choose to give all my fears over to my higher power, I will be free. And for me, higher power is connected to God and good conscience and I have a very nuts and bolts understanding of God God is truth, God is love God works through people and on a daily basis I get a message of wisdom, experience and strength and hope, hopefully, from people around me it's to, my, it's to the better and good of good conscience, often but we must look out for vexatious people in our lives and let them go if they need to be let out and gone or we become like them Anyway, enough of that. What I say at the beginning, or rather the end of this, these videos, uh, is the serenity prayer. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, courage to change the things I can, 
and the wisdom to know the difference and make maybe the best choices I can just for today and more later. Don in London, good morning, June 21st, 2008, and uh, around about 8.45 in the morning, uh, a good 24 hours for me, and a lot to do. I've been uh, for different tests at the hospital yesterday morning, and so far as I know, everything's okay, but I'll get to know more. I had an ECG, I can't have the, the official results, but it looked alright until a week from now, or when it, whenever it is sent to my GP. And uh, some of the things in modern life, computers, uh, system processes, often make, make makers have to be patient because they only work in a certain way as laid down by the people who specified how computer systems and uh, life systems work. And uh, I guess for people who are impatient like me, who want to know exactly what is going on with them, it takes us to a place of trying to be patient and I guess I am, I'm alright with it and I'm just learning a day at a time how to be patient but what if something were wrong and uh, there were something very important I know in the past it's been okay when I, uh, I couldn't work out what was wrong with me when I got type 1 by diabetes and that when people realised it was very important the whole uh, NH system worked very very quickly so if, there's an, if there are emergencies, they do respond very well. If it's routine, it seems to take forever because of the systems and how they, d they go about it. And uh, when I was in business, uh, it was working out what is the, the shortest distance between point A and point B. And point A was a product or service you wanted to make, and point B was delivering it to the, the consumer. And uh, what I realise over and over again is, first, those who made the systems may have made mistakes, and second, those who operate the system can also make mistakes, and t things take time. And sometimes we think we're modern, up-to-date, technologically okay and sound, and we're not. And I think that that is also true of how we live our lives. And my life has been going at a, at a pace these last few weeks, and I've enjoyed every moment of it. At the same time, I can feel burnout coming on, so I have to be careful with myself and make sure I'm doing all the right things to keep me in good order. So I feel like I need to moderate what I'm doing, slow down a bit, and be patient around a whole load of things which I would rather were more sorted than they are. And isn't that just life, the way life is? We can be frustrated, I guess, by slowness, when in fact slowness is doing us good. My video is all about recovery and uh, my take on what Alcoholics Anonymous does for me. I was looking on the uh, other video sites to do with AA. A lot of animosity out there about AA being uh, unhelpful to people. And the, the simple answer is when you've got to the very bottom of rock bottom and you're on your knees or actually face down on the pavement because you can't stop drinking. How on earth do you expect some organisation to sort of fix you very quickly when it's taken you years to get in that state? And uh, the simple answer is AA fixes no one. And that's uh, true. We fix ourselves as we le learn our choices and we uh, have a sy system of steps, 12 steps to take at whatever pace suits the individual and whatever the, the individual can do about it. So it's really re-establishing re choices for individuals how to make life work again. And that's not easy because we have a society which is saying, fix me, I want to be fixed, I need an organisation which can put me right so I can continue on my merry way of living. And the simple answer about AA is it allows people to find their choices in an open, honest, willing way to make life work again for them. And uh, I saw the fractiousness out there. I, don't re I very rarely go and look at other people's videos about AA or about recovery, simply because I need to find my own path. And uh, I don't know, I'm not up to challenging AA in some people's eyes, simply because I don't think it's a cult. And I don't think it's full of dogma. It's full of people who are just ordinary, trying to make life work one day at a time. 
and some of them believe in God and some don't and somewhere in between is where most of us are trying to work out life on a daily basis the preamble really gives the game away about AA it says Alcoholics Anonymous is a fellowship of men and women who share their experience, strength and hope with each other that they may solve their common problem and help others to recover from alcoholism the only requirement for membership is, is a desire to stop drinking there are no dues or fees for AA membership we are, not, we are self-supporting through our own contributions. AA is not allied with any sect, denomination, politics, organisation or institution. It does not wish to engage in any controversy, neither endorses nor opposes any causes. Our primary purpose is to stay sober and help other alcoholics to achieve sobriety. And that's so important to remember. It doesn't do anything more than what it says on the tin. It gives us the opportunity to uh, find ourselves again. And uh, whatever path we take is our choice. And I guess the uh, the overriding thing for me is if if we give power to something, an organisation, um, which is not there, and it's not, not even an organisation, it's just a fellowship. It makes it hard really to fasten down and blame somebody else when we don't succeed. And the truth is, we can only succeed right now in the mo one moment we have, this very one, and how we shape our attitudes. And I went to uh, what is called the Promises Meeting down in Flood Street at seven. Um, in Chelsea and listen to somebody sharing their story of experience, strength and hope and their experience was they were trapped by drinking as we all get that way drink too much and we get dependent we get dependent and addictions just around the corner and they shared uh, how their life had altered over the years where drink had put them down again and again and again and they lost their way and when we find our way again, it's stupendous because we actually start to make choices in the day about how to live well without booze and start to sort out our own emotional, spiritual and physical well-being. And part of the promise is, is we, don't, we don't promise anything, actually. The promise is that if you follow the, follow the instructions on the tin, you may find that sobriety will afford you many, many great gifts, the gift of seeing life as it is, and love, of course. Anyway, just quickly on the readings, daily reflections. 21st, it says, Fear and faith. The achievement of freedom from fear is a lifetime undertaking, one that can never be wholly completed, as we have fear in our lives always. When under ta heavy attack, acute illness, or in other conditions of serious insecurity, we shall sure all react to this emotion, well or badly, as the case may be. Only the self deceived will claim perfect freedom from fear, and of course that's true fear and what we did about it in the past was drinking it away and these days we actually have the courage maybe to deal with fear as it occurs so it goes on to say fear has caused suffering when I could have had more faith there are times when fear suddenly tears me apart just when I'm experiencing feelings of joy happiness and the lightness of heart faith and a feeling of self-worth toward a higher power helps me endure tragedy and it takes me when I choose to give all my fears over to my higher power, I will be free. And my higher power is good conscience connected to the good conscience of other people and um, making life work on a daily basis. So, no big uh, blinding flashes of spiritual, um, spectacular insights. Life is just as, as it is. Anyway, as it says in As Bill Sees It, domination and demand. The primary fact that we fail to recognize that we fail to recognize is our total inability to form a true friendship or partnership with another human being. Our egomania digs two dis disastrous pitfalls. Either we insist upon dominating the people we know or we depend upon them far too much. If we learn, lean too heavily on people, they would sooner or, sooner or later fail us, for they are human too and cannot possibly meet our incessant demands. In this way, our insecurity grows and festers. When we habitually try to manipulate others to our own, own willful desires, they evolve and resist, resist us heavily. Then we develop hurt feelings and a sense of persecution and a desire to retaliate. And it goes on to say, My dependency meant demand, a demand from the possession and control of the people and the conditions surrounding me. And what we learn in AA is, uh, and probably from uh, other places, is that basically we are powerless over people, places and things and what we have is a choice of what we do with our own lives on a daily basis rather than being imprisoned by ideas and a mental attitude which says I've got to be in control. 
am I in control today? Only of my choices. And I think that's so important. You know, if I didn't have control of my choices to do the right thing, what would life be like? And uh, on that note, I'd better stop. Don in London, hello. My video is all about recovery from addiction to either substance or behaviour. My addictive substance, alcohol, my behaviour equally addictive around people, places and things. So these days, sober one day at a time. And that's what seems to work. Live in the day, live in the moment. Find my spiritual connection to living in the, in the moment of now. Spiritual life is real life. Everything is spiritual. So all those 35 years of drinking were spiritual and what follows on one day at a time is also spiritual. I suppose really the question is for anyone, what quality of spiritual do we enjoy best? And only a person can make up their own mind what is best for them. So I share about what helped me into recovery and to be sober one day at a time with the help and aid of fellowship, that fellowship is AA. And today I just want to read from this book, Twelve Steps and Twelve Traditions, which is the backbone I guess of much of what the fellowship is about. Twelve steps so we can live well, open, honest and willing. And the twelve traditions in fellowship, unity, service and recovery. Sounds like the dog downstairs is not having a good time. So what is AA? I just share off the preamble, which is on this little card, which explains to anyone what the fellowship is there to do, to include people around being sober one day at a time, and living a spiritual life, knowing what our feelings are, and not drinking. So what is AA? Alcoholics Anonymous is a fellowship of men and women who share their experience, strength and hope with each other that they may solve their common problem and help others to recover from alcoholism. The only requirement for membership is a desire to stop drinking. There are no dues or fees for AA membership. We are self-supporting through our own contributions. AA is not allied with any sect, denomination, politics, organisation or institution. Does not wish to engage in any controversy, neither endorses nor opposes any causes. Our primary purpose is to stay sober and help other alcoholics to achieve sobriety. So it's all about being included. The only requirement for membership is a desire to stop drinking. And what you make of your life with the help of fellowship and the 12 steps and the 12 traditions and the big book of AA and how you come to live life is as it works for you as an individual because we are all unique and authentic on our life path as we are. So we try not to tell each other what to do. But there are some principles involved, and the principles in the 12 steps and 12 tradi traditions help us to find a sober life. And uh, June, for me, is all about step six. So I share the step, and also a commentary about how it works for me. And step six, it says here, we were ready or rather were entirely ready to have God remove all these defects of character. So what are defects and what are assets or what are our liabilities and what are our assets? It probably boils down to the in the biblical sense the seven deadly seven deadly sins and also the seven virtues, the opposite. And if you look on the internet you'll find many a version and here's just a version which I picked up quite quickly right so pride is excessive belief in one's own abilities that interferes with the individual's recognition of the grace of God it has been called the sin from which all others arise pride is also known as vanity so pride is the first deadly sin or defect Envy is the desire for others, traits, status, abilities or situation. Gluttony, the third one, is an inordinate desire to consume more than, one, than, more than that which one requires. 
Lust is an inordinate craving for the pleasures of the body. Anger is manifested in the individual who spurns love and opts instead for fury. It is also known as wrath, wrath or wrath. Sloth is the avoidance of physical or spiritual work. And the opposite, if you like, the seven contrary virtues. Humility, kindness, abstinence, chastity, patience, liberality, diligence. And the country virtues were derived from the battle for uh, the, the poem, an epic poem written by Prudentius, circa 410 AD, an epic poem written. Practicing these virtues is alleged to protect one against temptation toward the seven deadly sins, humility against pride, kindness against envy, abstinence against gluttony, chastity against lust, patience against anger, liberality against greed and diligence against sloth. So, very black and white, you're either one or the other. But in real life, what are we? We're all of those things at different times in our lives. And although the seven deadly sins and the seven virtues may sound quite old-fashioned, we all have some sort of traits around those issues. And the twelve steps of the fellowship try to address this in in the way I understand it, in step six and step seven. So step six is all about my defects of character, and step seven is all about my shortcomings. So my defects of character are the sins, and my shortcomings are not enough of the virtues, short on virtue. But in there somewhere is modern life, and life as it is today, and the changing values of society. But around that is a personal code so these 12 steps principles these 12 steps are about developing our own personal code of living and how we do that is entirely up to us no one's going to stop us doing it another way and if they were trying to stop us our sins or deadly sins of pride would get in the way we get stubborn and defiant often or I did so, step six in the fellowship program reads as this, with a bit of commentary from me. And don't forget, this is just a personal understanding. It's your understanding in the end which counts. And where do you get your personal understanding? From life. And also listening to the many voices in society, and probably in the fellowship of AA, if you stick around long enough. So, we're entirely ready to have God remove all these defects of character. This is the step that separates the men from the boys, or the women from the girls. So de declares a well-loved clergyman who happens to be one of AA's greatest friends. He goes on to explain that any person capable of enough willingness and honesty to try repeatedly, step six, yes, he goes on to explain that any person capable of enough willingness and honesty to try repeatedly, step six, on all his, his faults, without any reservations whatever, has indeed come a long way spiritually and is therefore entitled to be called a man who is sincerely trying to grow in the image and likeness of his own creator. And again, don't get hung up on creator. It's the God of your understanding or a power greater than you which counts in this. The common good often is used or utilised. Of course, the often disputed question of whether God can and will, under certain, certain conditions, remove defects of character will be answered with a prompt affirmative by almost any AA member. To him, this proposition will be no theory at all. It will be just about the largest fact in his life. He will usually offer his proof in a statement like this. Sure, I was beaten, absolutely licked. My own willpower just wouldn't work on alcohol change of scene, the best efforts of family, friends, doctors and clergymen got no place with my alcoholism. I simply couldn't stop drinking, and no human being could seem to do the job for me. But when I became willing to clean house, that's step four, and then asked a, a higher power, God as I understand him, to give me release, my obsessions to drink vanished. It was lifted right out of me. Well, it didn't quite work that way because I was a stubborn son of a gun 
and I thought I knew better for a long time. But when I got to fellowship, I found there were a lot of people who had given up on pride and said self will will run riot and willpower will fail. And it was right. So I listened to the many voices. If God works through people, the wisdom came quick and easy for me. So I stuck around for quite a while, shivering with, with fear, another one of my defects, until I could keep on listening to what was working for other people, and then I started to learn. In AA meetings all over the world, statements just like this are heard daily. It is plain for everybody to see that each sober AA member has been granted a release from this very obstinate and potentially fatal obsession. So in a very complete and literal way, all AAs have become entirely ready to have God remove the mania for alcohol from their lives, and God has proceeded to do exactly that. And I would add to that, as long as I keep on asking for help on a daily basis, and listening and learning from others how to live life beyond, beyond just stopping drinking, then my defects of character seem to diminish Personal attitude traits don't go away completely, they just don't. But if we ask on a daily basis, at least we have a, a good chance that we will operate more to our virtues than our defects. When men and women pour so much alcohol into themselves that they destroy their lives, they commit a most unnatural act. Defying their instinctive desire for self-preservation, they seem bent upon self-destruction. They work against their best their own deepest instinct. As they are humbled by the terrific beating administered by alcohol, the grace of God can enter them and expel their obsession. And uh, I guess the grace of God for me is keeping on learning, and as it says, humility, kindness, abstinence, chastity, patience, liber liberality and diligence. So working on sober rather than working on the next drink. Here, their powerful instinct to live can cooperate fully with their creator's desires to give them new life, for nature and God alike abhor suicide. But most of our other difficulties don't fall under such a category at all. Every normal person wants, for example, to eat, to reprodu reproduce, to be somebody in society, in the society of his fellows, and he wishes to be reasonably safe and secure as he tries to attain these things. Indeed, God made him that way. He did not design man to destroy himself by alcohol, but he did give, him, give man instincts to help him stay alive. It is nowhere evidence, evident, at least in this life, that our Creator expects us to fully eliminate our instinctive drives. Indeed, that would be foolish to think that. So far as we know, it is nowhere on record that God has completely removed from any human being all his natural drives. Indeed, that would be unnatural. Since most of us are born with an abundance of natural desires, it isn't strange that we often let these far exceed their intended purpose. And that's to do with our thinking and, and our vices, I guess. When they drive us blindly, or we willfully demand that they supply us with more satisfactions or pleasures than are possible or due to us, that is the point at which we depart from the degree of perfection that God wishes for us here on earth, or as nature intended. That is the measure of our character defects, or if you wish, our sins. If we ask, God will certainly forgive all our derelictions, but in no case does he render us as white as snow and keep us that way without our co cooperation. That is something we are supposed to be willing to work towards ourselves. He asks only that we try as best we know how to make progress in the building of character. So indeed it is about building of character. And if we think about our youth, where all our instincts and drives and desires were out of control as we came into adulthood, and then we find that we had to live in a society where we had to live to the norms, and of course drink is not one of them, to excess and then addiction. But of course every other behaviour can be an addiction too, as many have found. So step six, we're entirely ready to have God remove all these defects of character, is AA's way of stating the best possible attitude one can take in order to make a beginning on this lifetime job. In other words, to find balance 
in our natural drives and living so that we can be included in society this does not mean that we expect all of our char yes, character defects to be lifted out of us as the drive to drink was a few of them may be but with most of them we shall have to be content with patient improvement and that's the game progress not perfect because if we try to be perfect from day one we would fail we, we would be back on pride and self will the key words entirely ready underline the fact that we want to aim at the very best we know or can learn how many of us have this degree of readiness in an absolute sense practically nobody has it the best we can do with all honesty that, can, that we can summon is to try to have it even then the best of us will discover to our dismay that there is always a sticking point a point at which we say no I can't give this up yet and we shall often tread on even more dangerous ground when we cry this I will never give up such is the power of our instincts to overreach themselves no matter how far we have progressed desires will always be found which oppose the grace of God or as some say nature and providence as we've got to where we are in our nature and providence that is as the world is today some who feel they have done well may dispute this so let's try to think about it a little further practically everybody wishes to be rid of his most glaring and destructive handicaps no one wants to be so proud that he is scorned as a braggart nor so greedy that he is labelled a thief no one wants to be angry enough to murder lustful enough to rape gluttonous enough to ruin his health no one wants to be agonised by the chronic pain of envy or to be paralysed by sloth of course most human beings don't suffer these defects at, defects at these rock bottom levels we who have escaped these extremes are apt to congratulate ourselves yet can we after all hasn't it been self-interest pure and simple that has enabled us, most of us to escape not much spiritual effort is involved in avoiding excesses which will bring us punishment anyway but when we face up to the less violent aspects of these very same defects then where do we stand and this is where it's about you and your you and your understanding of life however it turns out to be what we must recognize now is that we exult in some of our defects we really love them who for example doesn't like to feel just a little superior to the next fellow or even quite a lot superior isn't it true that we like to let greed masquerade as ambition to think of liking lust seems impossible but how many men and women speak love with their lips and believe what they say so that they can hide lust in a dark corner of their minds and even whilst staying within conventional bounds many people have to admit that their imaginary sex excursions are apt to be all dressed up as dreams of romance indeed we can talk ourselves into anything I know this, I've done it self-righteous anger also can be very enjoyable in a perverse way we can actually take satisfaction from the fact that many people annoy us for it brings a comfortable feeling of superiority gossip barbed with our anger and I'm right I'm smiling there because it's very easy to become self-righteous in recovery I mean the simple answer is the more self-righteous we are the more we are dogmatic the more we are stubborn and defiant about something we believe there is one path and it happens to be mine and what I've learned in recovery my path if I stick with it defiantly and stubbornly I'll start to stumble and fall down pretty darn quickly because I need the input and in inclusion of everyone in my life gossip barred with our anger a polite form of murder by character assassination has its satisfactions for us too here we are not trying to help those we criticize we are trying to proclaim our own righteousness and uh, <coughs> I know this from things which have happened today self-righteousness doesn't do me or anybody else any good but if you point it out to another person that they're being self-righteous am I not also being self-righteous because I'm developing the argument so sometimes uh, in the fellowship we say desist of pen and tongue because there is nothing to add and nothing to be gained by it 
even though we like to do it and to an extent I can do it too even now and then I think to myself I must laugh at myself and stop it because I don't know what is right for you and if I don't know what's right for you how do I know what's right for me which is why I always say I need to keep on learning when gluttony is less than ruinous we have a milder word for that too we call it taking our comfort we live in a world riddled with envy to a greater or lesser degree everybody is infected with it from this defect we must surely get a warped yet definite satisfaction else why would we consume such great amounts of time wishing for what we have not rather than working for it or angrily looking for attributes we shall never have instead of adjusting to the fact and accepting it and how often we work hard with no better motive than to be secure and slothful later on only we call it only we call that retiring consider too our talent for pr procrastination which is really sloth in five syllables nearly anyone can make a good list of the of such defects as these and few of us would be se would seriously think of giving them up at least until they cause us excessive misery and without a doubt if we go hell for leather in one direction thinking we're right and we wonder why nobody's following us we do get somewhat alienated and, and messed up but if we don't stop giving up those ideas that we're always right or that my way or the highway is the right way then we are alone again and isolated and we may not drink but we're certainly not as sober as we could be some people of course may conclude that they are indeed ready to have all such defects taken from them but even these people if they construct a list of still milder defects will be obliged to admit that they prefer to hang on to some of them therefore it seems plain that few of us can quickly or easily become ready to aim at spiritual and moral perfection we want to settle for only as much perfection as it will as will get us by in life according of course to our various and sundry ideas are what will get us by so the difference between the boys and the men is the difference between striving for a self-determined objective and for the per perfect objective which is God of God yeah so we progress and are not perfect we realize some of our potential but our defects of character will get in the way if they remain out of balance and we hang on to them many many will ask at once ask how can we accept the entire implication of step six why that is perfection this sounds like a hard question but practically speaking it isn't only step one where we made the hundred percent admission we were powerless over alcohol can be practiced with absolute perfection the remaining 11 steps state perfect ideals so perfect ideals so strict adherence to the steps is about perfect ideals but you know strict adherence on a daily basis life is happening around us and we're going to be pushed and pulled in all sorts of ways so defects as well as virtues will be around there are goals towards which we look and the measuring sticks by which we estimate our progress seen in this light step six is still difficult but not at all impossible the only urgent thing is that we make a beginning and keep trying and that's it we make a beginning and keep trying so contingent on the day we ask for help and refocus ourselves around the virtues humility kindness abstinence chastity patience liberality and diligence we are on a better wicket if you like if you're a cricketer if we would gain any real advantage in the use of this step on problems other than alcohol we shall need to make a brand new venture into open-mindedness we shall need to raise our eyes towards perfection and be ready to walk in that direction it will seldom matter how haltingly we walk the only question will be are we ready so contingent on the day we ask are we ready to let go righteousness and every other excessive excessive outlook of personality trait are we ready and the only answer is yes really or if, you're, if we are stubborn and defiant and angry 
the answer may be no, so we keep on trying. Looking again at those defects we are still unwilling to give up, we ought to erase the hard and fast lines that we have drawn. Perhaps we shall be obliged in some cases still to say, this I cannot give up yet. But we should not say to ourselves that I will never give up. Let's dispose of what happen appears to be a hazardous open end we have left. It is suggested that we ought to become entirely willing to aim towards perfection. We know that some delay, however, might be pardoned. That word in the mind of a rationalising alcoholic could, con could certainly be given a long-term meaning. He could say, how very easy, sure, I'll head towards perfection, but I'm certainly not going to hurry. Maybe I can postpone dealing with some of my problems indefinitely. Of course, this won't do. Such a bluffing of oneself will have to go the way of many another pleasant rationalisation. At the very least, we shall have to come to grips with some of our worst character defects and take action towards their removal as quickly as possible. Or well, complete understanding that defects of character can come up in any moment of the day if we are provoked, or we provoke others. The moment we say no never, our minds close against the grace of God, or common sense. After all, what else would God's word be beyond common sense and wisdom for the common man? We're not talking rocket science here, we're talking common sense. Delay is dangerous, and rebellion may be fatal. This is the exact point at which we abandon limited objective and move towards God's will for us, as nature intended, nature and providence. All these wonderful words I like because... You know, spiritual is now. Spiritual is in the moment. It's not tomorrow and it's not yesterday. Although every experience we've had brings us to this spiritual moment of now. And either we accept life on life's terms, acceptance is the key always, or we get into trouble again. And it's being defiant or angry against our situation often. That life isn't giving us what we think we deserve. So just a reminder, the contrary virtues were derived as follows yeah. humility against pride kindness against envy abstinence against gluttony chastity against lust patience against anger liberality against greed and diligence against sloth and step six the seven deadly sins or removal of them is subject to asking on a daily basis how am I going to live today how do I want to behave how do I want to be open honest and willing to change my attitude and behavior to fit my circumstances and do my feelings fit my life right now if we've been good in our step four life story and expressed it and shared it with another human being and to our creator as we choose then step six defects fall out of that life story quite easily and also our shortcomings, the virtues, which is all about step seven. I don't know that we can take six and seven in isolation. I can have a step six day full of defects of character if I'm stubborn and defiant and go back to my old behavior. Or I can have a better day with a bit of courage, faith, confidence around humility, kindness, abstinence, chastity, patience, liberality, and diligence. And I'm a slow learner, and often have been a poor student in the past. I was criticised deeply by someone when they, I said I was a poor student in the past, or I could be a poor student, and it was pounced upon as a defect. It's a defect to keep on point, pointing it out. My defect would be not to say it, if you get my drift. So these are my views and understandings of step step six and seven so how does it work for me on a daily basis well in the morning I say how am I feeling why and what can I do and if I feel okay given my current situation my feelings fit my my experience right now then life is understandable and comprehensible I can I can get on with it but if my feelings don't fit my current reality my feelings are over the top in some way in a particular direction of those defects or sins or well, my virtues are without foundation 
courage, faith and confidence over elated I need to ask myself why am I feeling this way and that's not to actually analyse to death how am I feeling, why and what can I do is a very great starting point I don't know how I feel right now, why? because I haven't given it a second thought what can I do? consider my options today or if I wake up angry, fearful, resentful or just feeling like I can't cope or I don't know what to do then I need a bit more courage, faith and confidence and I often get that by ringing somebody up or making contact with another human being not necessarily in fellowship but somebody who I love and loves me back and that's unconditional love it's not dependent on anything else other than love to and from people who care something my father said he wished he had cherished my mother more and been less superficial and indifferent and I think that sums it up cherish always and less superficial and less indifferent the only way I can be that way is to understand my own life and how I relate to other people so the steps work for me daily because in mind and in meditation it's about what is the next right thing for everyone inclusively and not just me so I'm merely a player and I'm not the chief critic anymore I hope although I will be chief critic in my own life often and sometimes flail at others and be critical but it does me no good and it does them no good step 6 June step 7 July I can have a bit of both in each day I can have a fairly bad start or a fairly good start enough courage, faith and confidence to keep on going or I could have fear very facing an ego in my heart it's as life is and it's often better if I talk to another human being or get to a fellowship meeting where I can see what is working for others so I can join in and be a part of again freedom to choose life life on life's terms always a unique and authentic path for each person and in fellowship with one similarity a desire to be sober today the serenity prayer is where I finish all my videos hopefully to do with recovery without the screeching of the police cars going past on gracious me a typical London night where I live anyway serenity prayer yes I even sleep through all of that during the night often and then get told about it by my neighbours so to God or in good conscience the serenity prayer is as follows God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change courage to change the things I can and the wisdom to know the difference for me is just for today